709 Reasons Why is brought to you by Calman. Hi, and welcome back to another episode of 709 Reasons Why by Portrait Displays. Um, we're really pleased that we have uh, Art Su Wen Sang again with us in this episode. Um, uh, a previous episode, uh, Art actually presented the SW321C, and uh, this time, as we promised already in the last episode, um, he has something really new with him in his luggage. So, uh, welcome, and Thank you. what do you have for us? So, this is BenQ Latest SW272U. Pretty much, this is not in any customer hands at this point. This is one of the prototype unit that I have to, in my studio to do testing, and I brought it here to Portrait Display to do this video. And this is a really amazing display, and I'm sure we're gonna cover some of the capabilities of it too. Awesome, thank you. We talked about the 321 in the last episode mm -hmm. and about where you would use it and, and what the specialties are with this. Um, maybe you just want to start to give a little bit of background of the history of the 272N and, and what's the new thing about this new brand new model. So 272U is an upgrade to the SW271C. These are 27 inch 4K UHD display again. But with this one, BenQ have made a lot of improvement to it. For instance, they have updated the chip on the inside. So when you're doing hardware calibration, it is probably about 30 to 40 percent faster than it was before and I mean before was not you know was no slots to start out with but this is much faster they have also improved the coating on the panel you saw the coating on the SW321C it looks totally matte this is getting really close I would say 80 to 90 percent mm -hmm. of the SW321C matte coating whereas the previous generation we have a little bit slightly I would say more reflective display covering um, but this one is just you know total matte and it looks really amazing still not quite SW321C, but is really getting there. A couple of other things, we have a new industrial design. They guarantee now that the Delta E from for these displays from the factory is less than 1.5. Mm. This is an improvement from Delta E less than two. I mean, anything less than two is considered good. They're really pushing the boundaries. This one down to 1.5. It has a 400 nits max brightness, which is higher than the 321C. And on this one as well, it has 99% Adobe RGB, 100% sRGB, and also 99% P3 color gamut coverage, which is another big thing. And I would say one of the biggest surprise that you were impressed earlier when we were talking is this new wireless hotkey puck. So this mm. is their hotkey puck Gen 3 that gives you so many information about the display. For instance, if I'm in this mode right now, I can simply press the info button right in front, and it will tell me exactly what the brightness white point gamma is, what color mode I'm in, and if I'm in calibration mode where I custom calibrated with Palette Master Ultimate, this is their calibration software, it will tell me exactly in calibration one, two, or three what are the settings that I've used because in the previous one, you can see that there's calibration one, two, or three, but you don't know the settings to it. This one, you can find out exactly what that calibration setting is. That's awesome. I mean, that's really awesome. So basically, BenQ cranked up everything to 11 with this one, right? Pretty much, exactly. That's, that's awesome. So this model is also Kelman ready, and it's also Kelman verified, yes. basically. So it's going to be um, pretty much what you already know with the 321C. Um, as Art already pointed out, hardware calibration means that with Kelman ready, Kelman talks directly to the uh, display. And you can load 1D LUT and 3D LUT, or 1D LUT and 3 uh, by 3 matrix uh, color mm -hmm. into the display. Um, but as you have seen, and uh, maybe we get a little bit more demo than uh, assume, it's kind of you have a much better um, user experience with this remote control, as I yeah, would call exactly. it. Yeah, um, exactly. So that uh, this, this tedious hassle with normally knobs, and as you know them on the monitor, actually goes away. Um, Great, so you said 99% uh, Adobe RGB, yes. and what was that, 98% of P3? 99% P3. 99% P3. So, um, uh, what is the use case of that kind of monitor? I mean, what would be the typical uh, uh, artist or the, the artistry that's going to use that kind of technology? I would say that this is going to be the pinnacle of just display for any type of creative in general. This can work from graphic design up all the way to color grading in Rec. 709. This is gonna work really well for that. If you are a photographer and you may jump into, again, doing some video, perfect display for that. Now, the 400 nit brightness, again, it supports both HDR10 and HLG, so the, you can do the curve translation, but it doesn't necessarily mean you can really grade an HDR, but it gives you, again, a good translation of what that would look like. So if you're doing mastering on a high-end panel that can show a super high nit, this will be another good side display that you can calibrate and know you're gonna get good result, and this is how your content is going to look on any display that scales HDR content down. So, I mean, uses for multiple creative disciplines for this display still. 
Awesome, awesome. Well, and uh, when we looked at the 321, that was also one of the things that we talked about, the different abilities of getting your hardware calibration for the different LUTs for, let's like, say, Rec. 709 mm -hmm. um, with uh, the um, Adobe RGB or P3 color, yes. which uh, allows you then also to, very, for example, to create a, a PQ curve, PQ ETF, with the correct D65 uh, white point. Yes, exactly. So all of this can be then loaded into the display. Mm -hmm. Um, so, speaking of this, um, I think the um, Kalman Ready functionality is something we discussed very much in our last episode. Yes. But maybe we want to talk a little bit about Kalman Verify. Yeah, I do want to know more about that. So, I mean, there's a lot that goes on the back end, and this is something that I make it a point in many of my videos to really go into a little bit more about this, that I know Calman Ready and Calman, it's specifically Calman Verify, it's not just a stamp that BenQ put on. There's a lot of process that goes on the back end. So do you want to demystify a little bit of that for oh, us and sure, share sure. with me a little bit more Absolutely. and my audience? Yes. Um, so Calman Verified is actually uh, from the Calman Integrated Solutions Program. There are basically different steps. And Calman Ready is when the software directly talks to the monitor mm -hmm. and allows auto calibration. Uh, Calman Verified is something that's more about the verification process that already happens at the factory. Okay. So it's kind of the monitor was already tested and a report was provided by BenQ mm. that the display, for example, has a delta E of two or smaller, for example, so that the color error is actually around two or smaller on the delta E 2000 scale, which is normally the just noticeable difference between right. color errors. And so making sure that the observer doesn't really see any difference between the uh, reference color and the actually displayed color. Uh, another thing with Kelman Verified is that um, it also has to have at least 95% of, uh, of the color gamut being covered. So that means that actually covered. So that means that you can be sure that the the color reproduction somehow is pretty precise. So it gives you really peace of mind as a user because probably not every artist is a calibrator, right? No. And yeah. so that's maybe something, and that was the idea behind Kelman Verified is that uh, a lot of brands put a lot of effort into the pre calibration mm -hmm. uh, or are also picking better quality panels right. and using that within their manufacturing process to uh, provide hardware that is somehow good for the artist, depending on whatever art that is that's going to be created, digital art. Yes. Um, but in the end of the day, you have much more peace of mind when you get it out of the box that it's already right and it's already looking correct for yeah. whatever it was. Most common verified for so being like 709 or p3 color or adobe whatever that basically is yeah so it's usually what i tell people is that you're going to get these are obviously pre-calibrated from the factory you're going to get good colors right away out of the box but if you want to get the most precise color possible hardware calibration especially with these sw are the way to go now whether they use benq palette master ultimate software or if they work in a professional color production house and they're using calman they are ready to go with any of these software and that's the key thing Yes, absolutely. And we really appreciate that BenQ decided, yeah, since Kelman is kind of ubiquitous, it's everywhere kind yeah. of thing, it's like, okay, let's make sure that also Kelman talks to the BenQ monitors, mm -hmm. right? At least for the, to the SW series, exactly. right? Exactly. Um, yeah, and, it, it's usually what I tell most creatives, just like calibrate it, make sure you get good color, forget about it, and just concentrate on your creative work, whatever you may be doing, whether it's video, photo, whatever that may be, so that you don't have to think so much about this. This should just be a piece of technology that's there, you know, is precise, it just fades in, in the background. That's the whole goal for color management, I say at large. Right, and that said, so the unboxing experience is also with the Kelman Verified Monitor. Now when you get it out of the box, you have a very nice black envelope with, yes. within the box, and mm -hmm. then you have that calibration report from the factory already there. So I think that's also giving you a much better peace of mind yeah. already with, with that experience, right? Exactly, because every single panel that leaves the factory comes out slightly different, so that panel report card is pretty much a great sheet for your panel telling you how it is performing. So every single panel is going to be slightly different. But with this latest generation, BenQ have also done so much at the factory calibration. I mean, they got it down to the point where if you have multiple of these together from the factory, it's going to match much better than any other previous generation that have come before. And they're always improving the calibration in the factory, which is another reason why I'm proud to represent BenQ because they're really innovating in this area compared to any other manufacturers out there when it comes to the these pro high-end displays. Awesome. Now let's talk a little bit more about details here about the hardware. So you mentioned already there is a new panel that has less glare. It's almost pretty much kind of at the at the uh, center of, of uh, between the 321 and and much better than the previous 272. So uh, what else are some of those specific features you can uh, explain or talk about with this model? So. 
most of the things are already covered that are, you know, the significant one. I think the calibration being faster would be the main thing. And the other thing that I was talking about, you know, the hotkey pack, I think that would be the thing that bridged most of the user experience. So it, it just makes it much easier for you to use. All the controls, instead of being in the front, now you have a really clean front. The controls are now moved down here, or you can use the wireless hotkey puck. And the other thing, too, is that usually BenQ Pro displays would have an SD card slot and also USB Type A slots on the side of the display. This generation, they move it down all, to, all onto the bottom, so it's much easier for you to plug things in. And they also have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack if you want to be rocking your headphones or output sound to an external speaker. There's a DAC built into this, so it works out really well for those too. Excellent. So what about video inputs? Like is the HDMI, display port, how is that handled? Same thing, pretty much you have two HDMI, you also have one full display port along with a USB Type-C connection and also a USB-B as well in case you're using, for instance, a display port or HDMI that does not carry extra data. So when you're doing hardware calibration, for example, with CalMAN or with Palette Master Ultimate, if you're using those more, I would say, legacy type inputs, even though they're not really legacy yet, you would need to use the USB Type-B to connect between the display and also the computer. But otherwise, I mean, the standard for connection are pretty much what you would see in other displays at this point. And the nice thing about this too is you can also do different modes on the display. And this has been a feature for SW display for quite some time now. For instance, you can split the display in half, show one color gamut on half the display. The other half would show a different gamut. You can do pictures and in, picture in picture, picture by picture. So there's different options how you can populate the display differently to do comparison like in real time. If you're creative and if the work is that critical and you want to see those precisely, that would be the way how you would do it. Excellent, excellent. Well, that's pretty compelling. Um, so. Thinking about the use cases of that monitor, um, I saw you also have the pivot function, right? Yes. So you can basically actually turn it upside down like yeah, to the so portrait format, right? Exactly. Um, so you can do that with this. And one thing that I didn't mention too is that when we're showing these display right now, we're not showing the shading hood that comes with it. So mm -hmm. this being a professional photographer display, all SW displays comes with a shading hood. And that's the nice part about it. With this model, it also comes with a piece. So if you want to use a shading hood vertically, you can also do that too. In addition, to horizontal, very similar to the SW321C in the previous episode that we talked about. But yeah, you can rotate the display. Now you have to go and rotate this on the computer, but obviously you can totally do this, and that's pretty much back into his orientation. That's actually cool. You know, that's actually the name of the reason why our company is called Portrait Displays. I always wonder about that. Yeah, it is actually in the early 90s we had a pivot software that was used with old CRT monitors mm -hmm. that actually could be pivoted from landscape format to portrait format. That's actually how the name Portrait Displays came up. Oh. And that was the early days when we did this kind of software. And then we went into display control and mm -hmm. from display control to color. And that's where we are today. So from that, uh, and then in 2016, Portrait Displays acquired SpectraCal that some of the calibrators or people who do calibration still know from mm -hmm. the old CalMAN days. Yeah. And that was 2016. And then since then, well, everything else is basically history. Yeah. And I, I, in, in our conversation off camera too, I've been learning a lot more about what you guys are doing at CalMAN and Portrait Display and how the integration is now becoming deeper in many of the dis display technologies, including TVs are out there. And that's really great because it's now bringing, like, an, I would say a crucial important part to just seeing color in general, just viewing creative content. And even if you're streaming movies or you're gaming, I mean, color is important to see accurate colors, right? To see good colors the way how the creator have intended. Your software is making that happen on so many more devices, and that's amazing. Yeah, thank you. I mean, that's what we call the lens to living room experience. And it really is kind of depends on what is the lens. It could be on set, you know, it mm -hmm. could be uh, something in the movie and film production or on a TV show production, um, and then, uh, or photography, you know, or a kind of digital art that's created somewhere. Right. And then it travels all the way down to the living room or even on a mobile device. And as, uh, speaking of on the road, I think you said there is a version that's a a bit smaller, right, for photographers on the road? There's a 24-inch version, that's the SW240. Okay. So that one's slightly smaller, um, and it's actually still a really good display, good colors also, and it's much easier to carry with you on the road. Although, taking a look at this one now, 27-inch is large, but this fits into a car just fine too. And if you want to take it into you know, a studio shoot, that's fine. I mean, this prototype was carried in a very interesting way, up from SoCal to <laughs> Portrait Studio here, but we're not going to talk much about that. Yeah, good. And we're happy that we just have it here, so it's kind of it's cool that, we, that this turned out yeah. well. 
I mean, most of the customers I end mm. up working with on these displays tend to be photographers. There are videos right. people too, uh -huh. but they're mostly independent creators. So they're not going to worry so much about how it would show up on another pro photographer display, but they do panic when the color doesn't match on here. Yeah. And obviously, it's not going to match. Right. Um, and it's just like, you can't worry about that. The only thing you can do is calibrate this. But I can see that in a... I mean, these, the way how I put it is this. Deploying these displays, for instance, in a large creative corporation makes sense because you can guarantee end-to-end -end and between different displays that the colors are going to look the same. Right. So when you're working in a large team collaborative workflow, it just makes sense that you're seeing everyone can pick up the project at any given point in time and not having to worry like, oh, the color's a little bit off or the blue is, has a little bit more purple hue or something like that. You don't want that to happen. Yes, makes total sense. And that's pretty much the same what you know from a video or production workflow or a film production workflow. You're maintaining color from set to post to, dis to, to finishing to distribution and everybody who's working on the same project actually starts to see the same thing. Mm -hmm. So that, that makes sense and, and uh, especially now for example if you don't have the chance to calibrate probably for right. whatever reason I mean take an example like the pandemic which yeah. was just recently right uh, even Kelman Verified for example gives you at least a specific piece of mind or the project manager a piece of mind that whoever is sitting somewhere has something that somehow works correctly. Yes, exactly. And yes, when it comes out of the box already, right? Yeah, essentially there is a baseline you're working from. You're not just grabbing a random display somewhere from a store and just propping it onto your desk and the colors may be good or bad, like you don't know. So this gives you that peace of mind that you would not otherwise have. Yes, absolutely. So compared to the uh, 321C, for example, which had this older menu, so I was pretty impressed about this new user interface and also the user experience. Pretty much. Can you show a little bit about this and, and um, yeah, what, what's, what's new, what's so different about this? So the new part comes starting out with the wireless hotkey puck gen 3. So the other previous SW display have a wired hotkey puck and the in user interface on the screen that what you see is a lot different too so with this one as I mentioned before you can simply press the info button that's right in front and you can pretty much pull up the info about the display the connection the resolution you're running at you know what current frame rate you're using is HDR on or not so this gives you so much information right up front right away now the other thing too is that if you for instance if the display is on but it's not plugged into a source, the moment you plug it in, you're also going to see a pop-up coming up on the other corner of the screen as well saying, hey, these are the connection, these are the resolution that is being sent from the nice. computer right now. So now you know what color information you are getting from your computer right away. Now the other thing that I really like about this menu in general and this wireless hockey puck is that I can now really sit back and don't have to worry about any wires, but there is a new menu. And this new menu, I think, is really bringing the display into a more modern era so on this basic info screen you can see that there is current information about the connection the resolution the refresh rate and everything but as we go along you can go in and change all these different parameters and this gives you a lot of control over how you want to change the different modes on the display for instance these are the various modes you can do for example I can turn this on and this is going to do I believe a picture by picture and the nice thing about this is I can change some of the color gamuts between here too. I'm going to leave things the way how they are. I'm going to turn off picture by picture for now but this gives you an idea how you can see two different gamuts on one display. There is like all the different setting menus that you can go through but again the user interface it's more of like retina quality now instead of just more of like the pixelated one so everything has really been brought up by quite a bit actually in terms of just the overall quality and user experience and personally for me I feel like this is a lot easier to use as well when you take a look at the menus and everything. The other thing that is all this display also does as well that I really like is that it now shows the usage time of the panel and this is really bringing it up a lot more with pro hardware calibrated displays out there so again a move in the right direction. The other thing that I also like about this display in the info screen as well is that it also shows you the chroma subsampling that's system is sending out and this is important because if you are using for instance HDMI you can see right away is the RGB range limiter or not are they using full RGB are they using YCBCR um, 422 444 all these information that I think color geeks like us yes. want to know Absolutely. but it's, it's like even though if you're not a color geek you can just look at it right there and see if the RGB range is limited or not because if it is limited that's going to change how you would get 
the calibration, how you would approach it because there are certain certain tones that are being truncated, right? Instead of getting the zero to 255, you're now getting 16 to 235. And that's a lot of information on the low end and the high end there. It's just totally being cut off. And having those information, I think, at your fingertip is important. This also helps as well when you're really trying to diagnose a calibration issue, why things are not working properly, why you're not seeing certain tones, and this will give you all those information. Very nice. What I also like pretty much is like for the calibration modes, Cal 1, 2, 3, mm -hmm. that you also see everything that was set up, right? right? Exactly. Like I think you saw color gamut, the gamma, the EOTF. You really exactly. see, and at a glance, you see exactly what the mode is all so about. So yeah, right? this is the screen, so you can go into different hardware calibration modes and will tell you what color gamut, what gamma, white point, as you mentioned, including the brightness as well. Because in the previous generation, you would see calibration one, two, and three. But again, you never know what settings they are unless you know exactly for a fact that you have calibrated to these settings and you may be able to match with the ICC profile in the system. But for the most part, it's a lot of guessing game. And yeah. this takes a lot of that ambiguity away and just makes it that much clearer. That's really nice. It goes more like into the broadcast monitor direction mm -hmm. where you have uh, all that in important additional information. Exactly. Yes, yes. So you know much more what you're doing yeah. and everybody should know what they are doing, right? So exactly. that's awesome. <laughs> I mean, this, even if you don't really need to know all the technical spec, you should know some of these things because these are the tools. They're like your camera. You just don't go out and just take your camera out. You have to know how to operate on some basic level and these displays are pretty much the exact same story. Right. And that gets back to know your tools, right? Yeah. If you're a photographer, you have to understand your camera yeah. and, and also what your camera can do, but it's the same about the monitoring and if you want to finally, on the last mile, yeah. know what you're doing with your with your color and with your uh, editing software. But I'm also going to add this too, that this last mile is a crucial part because if you really think about it, a lot of time is spent on capturing, like what we're doing now, a lot of time is spent on the editing part. But if you really think about it, majority of the times on any creative content, where does that creative work spend the time on? It's on the display. You're editing on the display. You're color grading on the display. You're mastering this on the display and it gets exported to go where? To be shown on a display. Yes, exactly. So this, <clears throat> as much as we think of it as the last mile, is the crucial part that binds <clears throat> everything together. And this is why having a color accurate display and also good software to run these type of hardware calibration on is definitely crucial for pro color critical workflow. Yes, and thanks Art. For, and that's the reason why we always suggest also to calibrate for the different deliverables yes. you create or you want to create for a customer, a client, or for yourself yeah. based on what is the video standard or what's the, what's the color standard, depending on if it is still photography or if it is video, um, to make sure that all those modes are correct and everything works according to uh, international recognize video standards. Exactly. Right? Yeah, because once you know they go out from your display, you can't control it anymore. The only thing you can do is be sure that you're editing on a good color accurate display that has a very low delta E. And you can know that if it doesn't show up right on a mobile device, well, there's not much you can do about that. But you know for a fact that when you were mastering that content, it looks correct. Right, and here's another very interesting story, by the way. You were mentioning that Calman is now being more and more used in the retail space as well. Now, here's the thing. There was a time where people or creatives even were saying, well, who cares about how the stuff looks in the end because we don't know how it's going to look in the living rooms, right? And it's a very sad statement, by the way. So, I and I think it's a poor statement, too. If you like your work, you want to stand in for your work, and hopefully you just want to deliver it in the best possible way, right. even if you don't know how it's going to be displayed. But here's the good news. Um, what calibration as a service, as it is called, more and more retailers across the world are using a turnkey solution with Kelman Everywhere to calibrate consumer TVs, which are also Kelman ready, like this. Mm -hmm. And those retailers are trained through Kelman Academy, and they know exactly how to get the best. So you have a day mode, a night mode, HDR mode. So there's a high likability. If you guys and creatives create something with this, it's going to show up on those TVs in a very good way now these days. Because yeah. the people use maybe a calibrated TV at home, calibrated by the retailer they bought it mm -hmm. from, and you're going to see it the same way because it was BT709 color or because it was P3 color or whatever yes. the color was. Mm -hmm. So I think that's also a very encouraging thought. It's not that you would say, we don't know what happens. More and more people are more color critical. The retailers are, they like to propose the services. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's also a very good news that your art finally is going to be preserved the way it was intended. Yeah.
So thanks, Art, for coming again. Um, I hope we're going to repeat this with one of the next models. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I think you're going back to uh, Southern Cal today or tomorrow? Uh, it's tomorrow. Okay, good. So safe driving, well, and yeah. we're going to see you soon, and let us know what you think in the comment section. Thank you.